Okay, look familiar? It should. Everything about it is normal, except it's fast. Let's see how fast. So we'll take an R wave close to a dark line here, and we'll measure the number of big boxes. One, two, three. Okay, so it's between two and three big boxes. Two big boxes would be 150. Three big boxes would be a 100. So this is between 100 and 150. So let's call it about 130. Looks like sinus tachycardia. Any rhythm greater than 100 is considered tachycardia. Sinus, junctional, ventricular, any pacemaker cells faster than 100 is tachy. So that's the rate. The rhythm looks to be about regular. The R waves are evenly spaced. There's a P wave for every QRS. There's a QRS for every P wave. The PR interval looks to be about normal. We'll take this P wave here. It should be less than one big box to the beginning of the QRS complex. And it certainly is that. So the PR interval is less than 0.2 seconds. So that's normal. And the QRS complexes look to be less than three little boxes. Etiology for sinus tachycardia. Well, it results from an increased rate of SA no discharge. Potential causes include exercise, fever, anxiety, hypovolemia, anemia, pump failure, increased sympathetic tone, hypoxia, among other things. In other words, this is a compensatory mechanism. The clinical significance, well, if there's a decreased cardiac output, and we can certainly have that if the rates get to be too high, over 140, 150, Rapid, very rapid rates can precipitate ischemia, injury, or infarct. The treatment, it's directed at the underlying cause. Fix the cause, fix the tachycardia. If the patient has a fever, lower the temperature. If this is a, a case of hypovolemia, give the patient fluids. In other words, fix the problem. Ready for another name that rhythm? This one was sinus tach. What's this? Okay, now this is definitely fast. Let's see how fast. Here's a nice R wave right on top of a dark line. So this is one big box, that'd be 300. This is two big boxes, that'd be 150. So this is somewhere between 150 and 300. Looks to be about 190 or so. Hmm, sinus tack? Maybe, but not in an adult. The normal sinus in an adult at rest is not believed to be capable of going much over 150 beats per minute. This is not sinus tack. This is not a compensatory mechanism. This is atrial tack. Etiology? Well, it's a variant of sinus dysrhythmia, which is a natural phenomenon in the very young or old. It may also be caused by ischemic heart disease or atrial dilation something we could see more clearly in a 12-lead EKG. 
There is not really much of a clinical significance, but it may be a precursor to other atrial dysrhythmias. Let's look at some dysrhythmias that might be more serious. Name that rhythm. Okay, nothing much looks normal here. As far as a rate is concerned, it's going to be a little difficult to tell because the R waves are not evenly spaced. We could take a six second strip, multiply that by 10, and that would give us the average. As far as the rhythm is concerned, it is irregular, and it's irregularly irregular. That's actually half the definition for a particular dysrhythmia. There are no P waves, and so PR intervals are irrelevant. And in fact, that's the other half of the definition for this rhythm. It's irregularly irregular with no discernible P waves. This is atrial fib. It is the chaotic firing of random cells within the atria that become the pacemaker cells in a totally haphazard way. The result is that there is no discernible P wave. This is very important. Usually when I ask for a description of AFib, folks respond that's it, that it's irregularly irregular. Actually, again, that's only half the answer. AFib is an irregularly irregular rhythm with no discernible P waves. There are other ECGs that are irregularly irregular, and they are not AFib. We will see more of that a little later. Let's take a look at the heart's actual behavior. The patient with this rhythm is challenged in a number of ways. Firstly, because the atria just quiver and do not actually contract, cardiac output may diminish by 20% or so. That's what is lost by the so-called atrial kick. Perhaps as importantly, clots may form in the fibrillating atria. But let's move on. Unlike others in the series, this video is more about interpretation than clinical issues. Name that rhythm. Okay, so let's look at the rate first. From the beginning of this R wave to this line is 300. This would be 150. So this is a heart rate of about 150. The rhythm, it's regular. The R waves seem to be evenly spaced. P waves, hmm, kind of funky looking P waves. Funky, starts with an F. Hmm, those are actually F waves or flutter waves. Notice the sawtooth pattern, and that's the giveaway for this particular dysrhythmia. This particular dysrhythmia is called atrial flutter. Now, don't be misled by the fact that this is regular. Atrial flutter can just as likely be irregularly irregular. In other words, it can have a variable conduction rate. This is not terribly unlike atrial fib. The etiology is similar to AFib. It's usually associated with organic disease such as congestive heart failure, and it's rarely seen with a myocardial infarction.